<laughs> there is something both perverse and alluring in the figure of witches. An old lady who performs sinister deeds, hard to explain but easy to grasp on an intuitive level. The magical crone remains one of humanity's oldest motifs. From all witches, Baba Yaga can be considered one of the creepiest entities in the world. Hailing from pre-Christian roots of the Slavic world, this cannibalistic witch is a must for all horror fans. The origins of her name are discussed. Babushka means grandmother in modern Russia, yet Baba is an insulting word for women. The latter was supposed to mean sorceress or midwife in past times. Interestingly, Yaga is a word that has no agreed meaning. Experts associate it with oppression, snakes, horror or illnesses, and also evil women, witches or mothers. My first impression of Baba Yaga came from a wooden doll I saw in a store there. As a child, I always had trouble telling Baba Yaga from the stone Yagas apart. It took a picture book and my grandfather's patience for me to understand that the old Babas were different from the witch. Both were Babas, but one was a child-eating creep and the others were these vague nature spirits. Baba Yaga is known as an old, skinny hag with a horrifying appearance an enormous nose, long fangs, and matted hair. She is mainly known for kidnapping children and eating their flesh. And yet, her hunger never was satiated. The witch remained in her bones despite all the food she consumed. In 1940, my grandfather was made to join the Red Army against the Nazis. His mother had passed away due to illness before the war began, while his dad and most of his male cousins dispersed as the conflict advanced. My grandfather never opened up about what happened there. He only shared the same anecdotes about learning how to charge and hold the guns, the bad food rations, or the songs from his unit. That's why the night he told me about the continuation war still creeps me out. After completing his training, he assisted the foot soldiers on the Western Front and later got sent to Moscow. He got assigned to a new group and they had to journey up the north until they reached Baba's homeland. He was both fascinated and creeped out by the situation, as Karelia, or Karjala as his grandmother called it, was a vague memory from his childhood. The Finnish wanted back the land that they had lost during the Winter War. The Germans helped them. The Red Army was there to defend it. My grandfather began on the supply lines between the Allies and the Soviets, then weapon logistics. He soon understood that he was about to be sent to the front lines. And so it was. The colors of hell were dark blue, white, and full of metallic hues. Wounded bodies, dead men, dismembered limbs, and other things. Broken machinery, screams in different languages and icy frostiness. If hell was somewhere, then it was a cold place. The subarctic weather was too much for my grandfather. Fever sent him on the way to Murmansk, as his superiors didn't want to waste resources. Journeying up by night, under the protection of a taiga forest, his group received orders to wait in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, the night sky shone orange and red. They had been spotted. Shooting and yelling dominated the night. They tried to hold position, but the darkness and the pine trees only made orientation hard. My grandfather's group dispersed. He could feel the bullets flying close and yelling in different dialects. It was chaotic. In the end, my grandfather ran. He ran and ran and ran until everything was darker and colder. He sought refuge in an old pine tree with thick roots and strong branches. Climbing clumsily, struggling with his long robe and thick gloves, he found cover among the branches. His fur hat fell down. He cursed. What if someone found his tracks in the morning? The hat was an obvious signal that a red soldier had passed by. 
The wind's howling was violent and fierce, and his clothes were drenched from the snow and the mud. The sanest thing to do was to wait until daylight, but by that point, the Finnish would have emitted an alarm. He had no other choice. His body was cold but sweaty. The fever had returned. In the end, my grandfather spent the night submerged in a weak slumber, hanging from a branch for dear life and shivering from the brutal coldness. Close to dawn, the sound of metallic footsteps woke him up. A black figure was walking away. Something about it was odd, but he couldn't exactly tell why. German voices were close. A chill ran down my grandfather's back. A rhythmic sound that could only come from a machine was reaching their position. Horrible screaming ensued. The voices were desperate and hysterical. Shotguns were heard, and then nothing. My grandfather caught a glimpse of bloodstains over white snow, but didn't risk his position. Strange noises ensued, fabric breaking down, cutting, and mastication? Grunts? Was an animal chewing? The soldiers had guns. A bear? It was impossible. The wind was howling violently, and the tree's branches shook with him still up there. A sense of primal fear was holding my grandfather quiet. A strange ringing took control of his ears. Something was very wrong with whatever was going on out there. In the end, the chewing noises stopped. It was followed by a shrilling laugh. And then my grandfather saw a bloodied hag traveling inside a mortar. She was sitting with her knees up to her chin. The space was too small for her. The rhythmic sound came from the pestle the woman used to impulse the mortar. Her joyful laugh was as savage, deep, and ancient as nature. My grandfather remained there. As dawn came, a knight in a white enameled armor passed in a horse. It had to be a hallucination. My grandfather woke up by the tree's roots. His body was almost frozen, and the sight of a familiar Soviet uniform gave him both anxiety and fear. Was he going to be scolded? Yelled at? His head hurt a lot. A concussion. He was lifted on a litter, and as he began to be carried away, something caught his interest. Statues. Stone statues. One even had the remains of a wooden hut next to it. When, much later, a nurse informed him of the fact that the corpses of three German soldiers were found with signs of being eaten from lacking members or bone being consumed to the marrow, my grandfather could only laugh hysterically. There was nothing colder than that memory.